Good morning, this is Kai Viola coming at you with another video, Coffee and Jesus. Here we go. Alright, so I'm excited for this video. This is called Advanced Prayer Secrets. I'm going to first share some scriptures about prayer secrets and what a praying lifestyle is like. First, I am led to Philippians 4. It says this, Don't worry about a thing. Instead, pray about everything. So we are not supposed to worry about a thing. And once you start worrying, that's a sign that you should start praying. So pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. So stay thankful to God. When you start worrying, pray. And just tell him all the things that you need, all the things that you want, and declare a lot of things. So there's a lot of scripture here that are keys in our prayer life. Matthew ver chapter 7, verse 9 says this. Do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child who asked for food a plate of rocks instead? Or when asked for a piece of fish, what parent would offer his child a snake instead? If you, imperfect as you are, Know how to lovingly take care of your children. Give them what's best. How much more ready is your heavenly father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him? So the key of revelation here is to know your father in heaven cares for you, loves you, and wants to give you even more than um, what you even ask for or think or imagine. And that's also in Ephesians. But the father wants to give us way more than we can even ask. So for parents, your own children, if they ask you for something, are you going to give them rocks instead of bread when they're hungry? No, you're going to give them something good. Same thing with their father in heaven. Okay, so going into Matthew 18, verse um, uh, 18, 18, it says this, I, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So Jesus is actually showing us that we have authority, that he's given us authority as believers to bind the things of heaven and earth and to loosen, to forbid or permit. We declare and we bring things from heaven into earth. Then he goes on to say this. I also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, so just two believers, if we come into agreement, he says, my father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. So any believers who come together, Christ is right there in the center. And whatever you agree with and declare, as it says, you know, whatever you permit or bind in heaven and earth, it shall be done because Jesus is right there with us. So knowing our authority reminds me of Ephesians um, 2.6. We are co-seated with him in the heavenly realms. That means we are co-seated with Jesus at the throne, at the right hand of God. We actually pray from our position in Christ. We pray from the throne room of heaven. We pray from the place of authority. So these revelations are key um, to your prayer lifestyle. So John has a lot of keys as well, talking about the Holy Spirit. I have 14, 15, and 16, where there's revelations here. So John 14, verse 16, he says, and, um, sorry, in 13, he says, you can ask for anything in my name. So the name of Jesus, is, he says to use in prayer. So anything you ask in his name, he says, I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. So that's also the purpose of using the name of Jesus. So when you pray and you get your prayers answered, it brings glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Okay. It also says in verse um, 16, And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth and he's an advocate and he's a comforter. Um, skipping to verse 26, it says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. 
So the Holy Spirit, getting in tune with the Holy Spirit is super key in our prayer life. Jesus goes on to say this in, um, in 15. He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. So remaining in Jesus. He says, for branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So our prayers can also be empty when we're not remaining in the true vine, in Jesus Christ, the one who's in authority. And we pray from that place. When, we're, when we are connected with Jesus and we can trust his name, we believe in faith, and we actually pray from that place of being connected to the source, Jesus Christ himself. Uh, chapter, and again, the Holy Spirit is key in all this too. So the Holy Spirit um, is the spirit of truth, as it says in verse um, chapter 16, verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. So the Holy Spirit will also teach you and remind you of the things to come, uh, of the truths that Jesus has spoken. And so it is key to get connected with the Father through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We have the whole triune God, and that's a key, that's all key in our prayer life. So that being said, I will uh, demonstrate my own prayer life and tell you a little bit about what I pray for. So every day I acknowledge God. There's also other scripture, I think it's in Proverbs. It says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your steps. So I want his direction. I want his instruction. I want the Holy Spirit to talk to me, to even tell me about what's about to happen and lead and guide me and reveal truth to me. So I always acknowledge God every single day. Many mornings, I'll just even wake up and I just raise my hand and say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I love you and I thank you. And then I go on if I, and if I'm in, you know, if I got some energy, sometimes I'll just throw that and I go back to sleep. But in some time in the day, I will say, um, Father, thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's the scripture from the Psalms. So there's something about using the word of God and implementing it into your everyday life. So I declare those things. And I even, I'll even i even ask God, God, thank you that this day is a good day. I'll throw in a great day or a wonderful day. And guess what? God makes it into a, a great and wonderful day. So you can ask anything to your father. And every person is different. He's your father. And that's the key thing is to know that your father in heaven sees you, hears you, knows you, and just wants a relationship with you. And I also declare to God all the time, God, I have nothing good apart from you. And I don't want to do anything without you. I tell Jesus all the time, I need you. So sometimes it can just be a five second window before I do something. I'll just be like, Jesus, I need you. That's a prayer. It doesn't have to be this deep thing, um, you know, that takes like hours and hours. However, that can be very important too. He does call us into our prayer closet to to take time and space and just dedicate that time with him. But you can also just pray for five seconds right before you're going into something. I ask God for his help at my workplace. I ask God for help in, all, in a lot of things. And I just, add, I just say, God, I thank you for helping me at work. Thank you for helping my clients. Whatever it may be, I always ask God's help and because I know that I need him all the time. And that's the key revelation too knowing and just humbling yourself, believing God and asking for his help. And guess what? He's going to pull through all the time. He is so good and he's so faithful. No matter what, we should always keep believing in him, no matter what happens in this life. And there's many trials and tribulations, but Jesus says, take heart for I have overcome the world. And so um, in addition to that, I also pray in tongues every day so this is where we go into crazy town to for some people and they're like what you know i don't believe in that stuff you know in particular i've had two friends who even stated they didn't believe either and then all of a sudden god showed up 
and the spirit came upon them and they pr started praying in tongues out of nowhere um but that was to prove to them that tongues is real however what people don't do is they don't continue praying in tongues you can actually intentionally pray in tongues and ask for tongues and uh, practice it and it's good to be around other believers who believe in this stuff so i'll show you um my tongues but i'll show you the scripture that talks about tongues so jude one twenty, i actually have it bookmarked right in here and the passion translation it says this but you my delightfully loved friends constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith your most holy faith as in get to that max level of holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit so how can you pray all the time english words can only go so far your understanding can only go so far but praying in tongues is actually praying in the spirit as it's translated in the footnote here so that's what paul meant by praying in the spirit praying in tongues so that's the spirit so let me give a, a quick demonstration so I'm, I'm saying words. It's, a, it's like a baby's babble, which is also talks about in scripture too. From a, from a baby's mouth, um, it's like you're, you're, you're saying words just like a baby. They're, they're grafting these words and getting language acquisition. But this praying in the spirit is actually a direct transference from heaven and earth in fact things can be trans tra there's a transaction from heaven and earth much faster than your english words because there are things beyond than our just english understanding so i've heard that tongues praying in tongues is actually the number one spiritual activity that you can do so in addition to all that if you want to talk to me more about tongues we can talk about it but I also declare the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is very powerful and potent. And the demonic get, gets crazy and cannot um, take the blood of Jesus. So I declare the blood of Jesus all the time. In fact, the enemy is trying to take out that term, that word, out from the church and from people to use it. But I say use it as often as possible. I apply the blood of Jesus on myself all the time, my family, my household. I declare the blood of Jesus whenever I'm in public places and there's people around or even regions as I'm driving around. I plead the blood of Jesus over that region, that neighborhood, the room full of people, every individual's lives that's in that store that I'm walking in. That's my prayer life. I walk around and I pray in the spirit and I pray the blood of Jesus over people just in everyday life. And I do it in secret. It's me intercessing for people's lives because people need it. We all need the Lord, but people might not always believe it, practice it themselves. So I feel I've been compelled ever since I came to the Lord in 2012. I've had this unction and this fire in me to intercede for people and pray for people, even though they don't hear me. And that's okay. I'm praying for them anyways. So um, in addition to that, when I thought about um, Daniel, Daniel was a man who was after the, uh, after the Lord's heart, who um, read the prophecies of Jeremiah, who stated that the Israel people would come back to Israel from exile. And Daniel's like, oh, it's about that time. Daniel started um, reading, de praying, and then he fasted for 21 days. Well, after 21 days, an angel shows up. I believe his name was Michael. Michael showed up to, to tell Daniel, ever since you prayed, um, we came, but we were in warfare this whole time. For 21 days, the angelic were at war with the demons because the demonic is all over this world and we need angelic help. We need the Holy Spirit. We need uh, heaven's help. But apparently it took 21 days for them to break through that warfare and finally fulfill that prophecy that was already written and declared and it happened at some point but god needed daniel to agree read and pray for that so i hope this all encouraged you um this these are amazing prayer secrets i hope you watch the whole thing so god bless you and i will see you next time peace